salutations, whichever you prefer. Okay, I am very, very late to this band, and I regret that because, okay, I heard they had a new album coming out, and this time with Johnny Kelly on drums. Cool. I knew the song Revenge from the first album, and I liked it, but that was it. Okay, so I'm like, let me go back and listen to what they got already. Two albums, 2012's Self-Titled and 13's Revolution Rise. And you know what? You know what this is, man? What those first two albums totally reminded me of? Cross Purposes and Forbidden Era, Black Sabbath, man, Tony Martin era. Dude, that singer, Dewey Bragg, there are so many instances on those first two albums where that guy sounds so much like Tony Martin, so close. But not only that, not just the singer, but shit, the whole sound of the band, man, the kind of songs they write, and uh, yeah, I'm like, Kill Devil Hill? Cross Purposes and Forbidden, minus the synths on Cross Purposes, but other than that, it's that no frills, truly no bullshit, true to what got them there, uh, what, heavy metal, rock? All right, now, I have since read other people's analysis of LSCs of their sound, and I ran into Alice in Chains a lot. You know, a grungy guitar sound and bass sound, but you know what, man? If you can say things like what I said, the end of the Tony Martin era Sabbath and Alice in Chains, I don't know, man, I'm not saying anything. But all I'll say is, you might even hear, might, some Carnival of Souls era kiss in there, man. That first album after Revenge that went kinda dark, kinda dare I say, at least in some of the guitar tones, sort of a tad bit sludgy. Is sludge like a distant cousin of grunge? Maybe. But yeah, man, so those first two albums, you got unbridled, true to the nucleus, no bullshit rock, man. So if you like any of that, Cross Purposes and Forbidden, Alice in Chains, Carnival of Souls, it should follow that you'd also like Kill Devil Hill self-titled and Revolution Rise right after it. Tell me you don't hear that Gene song, Hate, that kicks off Carnival, uh, or Rusty Angel, Sad. A virtual death from cross purposes, absolutely. Or, dude, you know what else? And I'm serious about this too, man. I'm serious. You even and maybe very clearly hear moments of Dio Sabbath in there too. It is there, man, I'm telling you. So, okay, on to the new album, Seas of Oblivion. I present to you a quick rundown. So this, Seas of Oblivion, is all that. It's all that I mentioned before, but possibly slightly happier, a happier mood, but only slightly though, only slightly. The first track, Blood in the Water. Dude, all I'll say is that I must have played this song 50 fucking times in a row, man. 50 times. Listen to this chorus, man. You want to talk about one of those choruses that just like hooks you and gets stuck in your skin and in your brain and you want to sing it too and loudly. Oh my God. I was driving up 95 when I heard this fucking top down screaming out, blood in the water. Blood in the water. It's a real upbeat, aggressive, kind of like BLSE hard drive to it. Blood in the Water Man, awesome song. Next, Before the Devil Knows, another great moody, feel goodish chorus. Is it Dewey Bragg on vocals or is it Tony Martin? Solo kind of reminds me of the one in uh, Over and Over, Dio Sabbath on Mob Rules. And honestly, a few moments on Headless Cross, Tony Martin Sabbath. All right, Playing with Fire. Virtual Death Sabbath. Definitely Alice in Chains, Carnival of Souls. I can hear the chorus, the playing with fire line somewhere on Monster or Sonic Boom even. Undertow. All right, I won't give it away, but right out of the gate, there's something that sounds very, very similar to one of the big guns on Far Beyond Driven. You'll know exactly what I'm talking about when you hear it. It's not exact, but it's perfect for this song, and it works very, very cool. Farm a fucking suitical sunshine, man. All right, here's a song from this album that if you listen to it, I'm sure you'd want to talk about it. It's got that flood sort of dreariness from Trend Kill, and like, dude, you can just feel the hangover in it. Like, whatever that's from, in this case, probably some kind of pill or, like, well, pharmaceutical. This is one of those songs where when a band does such a good job of explaining a feeling, which I've noticed that before coincidentally in songs that have something to do with substances, but it is so clear that you're just like 
fuck, man. Super Joint Ritual did it very well on those first two albums, and so did the band Blood for Blood. True songs about the hell associated with addiction. Very infectious chorus, and it just does a magnificent job of letting you feel their pain, man. And there's a video for it, too, that, like, there's a very specific scene in the video, like they're all riding around on motorcycles in some barren desert, and at one point you see them all kind of like split off from each other, which I can only imagine is some kind of like allegory, whatever the fuck that means, for like, you know, when you're deep into that kind of shit and you probably run out of money to support the habit or something, and just like, you know, how easily you can lose everything at that moment, man, your friends, your family, your bandmates, very sad, very sad, but a very brilliantly done illustration in the video, man. Great song, Eye of the Storm. Once again, I can hear this somewhere on Forbidden, and it also kind of reminds me of Pledge of Allegiance to the State on Psycho Circus. Darkest Days, it's a very AIC-ish beat and swing and feel. Vocally, stylistically, very Tony Martin again. And there's a few spots where Dewey really lets his voice just fucking soar, man. Yes, yeah, soar, that's the word for it. What a talented singer, dude. Terrific rock voice, man. Just terrific. Bitter end. You know what this reminds me of? It reminds me of that song Skull Forest on Circle of Snakes, Danzig, which, hey, Danzig? Pretty Sabbathy at times, very doomy chorus and melody, and also kind of like the Tony Iommi song Time Is Mine with Anselmo on vocals. Devil in the Deep Blue Sea. Kind of reminds me of that Rebel Meets Rebel song with Hank 3 on it, uh, Get Out of My Life. You probably know Rebel Meets Rebel. They only had one album, but if you don't, it was Pantera minus Phil, but with David Allen Co. on vocals. And that reminds me, I saw Chris Stapleton a few weeks ago, same place I saw Pantera in last week, and during Tennessee Whiskey, it's one of Stapleton's biggest songs, it's a David Allen Co. cover. This motherfucker, man, this motherfucker a few seats over. Every time Chris sang smooth in the chorus, this fucking asshole for some reason would yell at the top of his lungs, not even in the right key, he would yell, smooth, <laughs> I can fucking believe that, man. I can only hope he was having a great time because uh, that fucking bastard, dude. Seize the day, it's a tough, hard driving riff, a great pre-chorus and a great chorus and a real badass solo that fits perfectly in the song. You can't kill me, California. All right, now, just like Blood in the Water, that was a single, this was too. You know what, man, I'll put it to you like this. Get three or four of those Seagram's wine coolers in you, or maybe a few Twisted Teas or something. Put this song on and tell me that buzz ain't compounded by this song's chorus. And you are singing along like a fucking idiot, and like I do now, and I'm stone sober. I absolutely love You Can't Kill Me, California, man. Of course, this track's got radio single or hit written all over it. This is an anthemic rocker right here, man. Fucking A. All right, now the next track. From the ashes. Dude, you know what? Hang on to that wine cooler buzz because it's gonna be put to work in From the Ashes, man. Dude, this is a ballad, man. This is a total and complete LA Guns Cinderella power ballad. If this gets played inside an arena, you can bet those lighters are gonna be up in the air, here, there, and everywhere because this is just a beautiful, beautiful song, man. Real big reverby drums, very emotional sounding vocal lines, and you know, for as LA Guns and Cinderella as this song is, I can also hear Axel with his clean voice, or hell his raspy voice too. I think he'd love it because, uh, well hell, I think tons of people would love it. I do, man, because you know what? You know some ballads still kind of rock? Ballad of Jane, Don't Close Your Eyes, Kicks, Don't Know What You Got Till It's Gone, From The Ashes too, man. Dig this song, cause it just fucking like, just like pharmaceutical sunshine, but maybe in like a sweeter kind of way. You feel this, man. You absolutely fucking feel it. Mr. Bragg, if you see this, you, sir, have written a gorgeous, beautiful song, and God bless you for it. Sell all your sorrows. <laughs> My God. Stranger than fiction. All right, back to some Kill Devil Hill flavored aggression, some bls -y feel after a softer moment and From the Ashes, and another track where I could hear Dio during the Sabbath years singing during the verses. Okay, Seas of Oblivion, the last 
proper Kill Devil Hill song on this album. This is very, very heaven and hell, devil you know, Black Sabbath. And I think Ronnie would love this song because I sure as hell like it a lot, but I've only heard it a few times since the album's release. Kind of reminds me of Over and Over from Mob Rules, but with Tony Martin on vocals. It's got a riff and uh, uh, BPM pretty similar to Shadow of the Wind from the Dio Years Heaven and Hell compilation. And I, you know what, now that I think about it, this song's fucking awesome, all right? Yeah, Seas of Oblivion, the title track from the album. It's got my fucking awesome grade or review or something, man. Fucking A. Okay, the last track on the album. You know what I think happened here? I think, hypothetically, if it was indeed the last recorded song of the session, I could see the band minus Johnny being like, okay, guys, one more song to record, and we're gonna do a cover of uh, Turn Up the Night or TV Crimes, something like that. And Johnny was like, uh, no, no, not right now, guys. I just need a small break, okay? Just a little break. And they were like, okay, then we'll cover Solitude. Solitude for Master of Reality. No drums. So the Solitude cover, man, it's like, remember the first time you heard Live Evil and got to know what it was like to hear Ronnie sing an Ozzy Sabbath? Uh, you wanna hear Tony singing an Ozzy Sabbath song you might not have heard before? Well, you can, because Dewey's got it covered for you. It's a great cover, man. Excellent cover. But all right, man, there you go. Seas of Oblivion by Kill Devil Hill. What is very, very clear is that these guys in 2023 and on the first two records have and are staying true to the forefathers that got them to pick up guitars and microphones and drums and all that and they do not infuse it with anything out of the ordinary it is the formula that you know and you love and that i love and for that i am happy and grateful that a self-titled album revolution rise and now seas of oblivion exist by the band kill devil hill hails dudes all right, man, there you go, fucking A. If you like this video, cool, man, maybe hit that like button. Or if you just like hearing somebody bullshit about metal, well, then the subscribe button's right down below. We'll see you next time on Concrete Spew, and probably pretty soon, because in just a few days, Chaos Horrific, the next album from Cannibal Corpse, comes out, and I am interested. So yeah, man, see you next time on Concrete Spew, and until then, all right, stay metal, my friends.